loud. They were down, but definitely not out. You cannot count this team out when they are 1-0 down. I'm back here with Mimi and Kukuka. Bit of a fake comeback. I kind of believe for a moment. What about you guys? I don't think it's a fake comeback if they win like two rounds. <laughs> it, it was a bit more. Like three? A bit. It was like a six. nine three. Four. Yeah. yeah, it was like six. It was like an eight, Five. eight, thirteen, right? Like coming in from a from a three. <laughs> I'm so happy that you can count. <laughs> I'm really been working on it. You can go. Really been working on it. Carry on. Carry <laughs> on. No, that's a high side. Go. Sorry, it only goes up to six. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, they got more more than six rounds, so uh, I feel like uh, you know maybe kind of a fake comeback, but nevertheless, mm. loud. They closed yeah. it out, uh, which means they forced them out three. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that first half, you know, let us know a lot of, of, of how Loud was exploiting the fact that there was no Sentinel on the side of Gen.G. We know that Cypher is incredibly strong on this breeze and not having it on that side. I think that it gave them a lot of leverage to do a lot of things. On the other side, when Gen.G uh, turned into the um, attack themselves, I didn't see that impact from Meteor. I think that Munchkin and Texture had a couple of very crazy rounds that might have given us that feeling of that fake comeback. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the rounds they were winning were off of the individual stuff, off, yeah. of, off of the players kind of finding timings, going crazy with the multi-kill. I mean, Texture in particular was looking ridiculous for, for most of that second half. But Loud, I, I think they play the normal comp that everyone plays for a reason. Cypher makes it really tough to mid-round on the attacking side when you're playing against him. The Viper is great, first off. Tui's, by the yeah. way, yeah. It really slotting into the role that Les has owned this entire year and he looked incredible right like this guy in america's i feel like is the new slept on player for loud it's like he's the next one down Literally. the totem ospas was talked about so no one talked about less now less is talked about so no one talks about twoies but but twoies as well has just been a really and whose consistent fault is that, player Mimi? whose fault is that for what? <laughs> Only talking about no, less? That's on me. I'm joking about I mean, no. we'll but I really see, like less. Yeah. We'll see what less can do and Tuis can do on the next map because Ascend is going to be that map when we're finally going to see QCK play something that isn't the Jet Bear. Yeah, exactly. Or I mean, that we? is what exactly that we is will. the question. Maybe we see some changes coming into. We were talking about a very short window of time before coming into this tournament, so we can anticipate that no. But hey, honestly, I said, you know, at least we know what less is going to be playing in Breeze, and I clearly didn't know. So what do I know anymore? Uh, that's true. I, uh, so this is the map where, where Loud is playing what they've kind of made to be their standard throughout the kickoff mm. in America's, where they're running this this breach Phoenix composition that yep. no one else is playing. They were playing it on this map, but in my opinion, it was the weakest showing of this idea. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, EG counter strategy. Exactly. The way they did that on their defense, a lot of uh, using two Odins, constantly spamming and pressuring mid, and also being very proactive to re-clear that space. This comp relies on getting mid control on mm -hmm. your attack side then splitting exactly. into sites if you try and strong take through main without dive nine times out of ten you're getting destroyed by stall utility and losing the round so i'm really interested to see if they take the risk in going back to this comp or if maybe they try something new and, and like go back to the default comp because i think that's also an option exactly stalling utility it, it has like double effect on them because they do not have they're lacking all of that mobility and all of that explosiveness into sites one through one as, as she's saying on the attack is going to be the common thing and at the same time they do not have a sentinel of their own to be covering on the defense so the same thing that Gen G struggled with on Breeze they might struggle with when it comes to the defense uh, and, and that mid part of the map I think that if Gen G is able to spot that weaknesses and come back a little bit also mentally for what happened on Breeze Maybe, you know, this, this could go their way. Yeah, Genji's a team who I think definitely will have been watching those VODs and, and mm. have looked at how EG managed to, to best this comp, likely expecting to see it in play here. They're, they're a team that has really good fundamentals, is solid on their attack at playing the, the slow mid-round setup, right? I mean, yeah. that's the defense solution. On attack, you just kind of have to feel out where these flashes are, bait out util, mm. and not lose out to these strong retakes. But, but let's spin that around. That, those are some of the downsides of this comp. Well, then why the hell is Loud picking it? Because the amount of flashes you have gives you a ridiculous amount of options mm. for mid-round reclears. Taking extremities way easier with this comp. Stun combos with a Phoenix Melon, that's really strong. Your retakes are much better than with the default comp. Again, because of combining all the different flashes, but you're giving up a Sentinel and you're giving up the dive yep. to do that. What comp do they choose? Oh, oh my god! Wait, oh, well, everything it's, goes down. It's the not Jet. It's not Jet, but it's also not the Phoenix. Okay, so they're still playing Breach. 
they're playing Viper still, but they've uh, locked in the Yoru instead. This this actually doesn't change the idea all that much. This is basically the same comp. You still have flashes, the equivalent of curveball, but now you actually get I dive with better it. flashes. Uh, yeah. You also have a lot of mobility. Maybe they think they know that we're going to be playing on the Phoenix. They might be playing to cancel those orbs to maybe, you know, the night that that's ults coming online all the time and maybe to twist some things around because everybody has seen us playing this Phoenix. To me, this fixes the primary issue that this composition has. It adds the dive into the mix. Loud are so good at cooking things up, at having creative comps. I'm so excited to get into this. I can't wait to get into it either. Sadak has been cooking. And oh, oh, on the other side, though, if Genji can pull this off, Pansy and Hypog, it will be a tremendous effort and an upset. You're absolutely right, Sue. And I think at this point, no one can then question Genji. When you look at Breeze being in the mix, it's a bit weird. And, you know, Icebox close could have got. Now, nah, if you can beat Loud here and they've adjusted the comp that a lot of people had issues with, and they still come out on top. Sure. 10 for, out of 10. for me, it's a huge positive to see Loud come in with this because I, I, I think the desk have absolutely nailed it. It, it. it addresses some of the main issues with that Phoenix. Now, yep. some sort of pressure towards the back line possible alongside Kowanzi and QCK, but I mean, both teams pulling out the curveball. The Yoru on map two and three here. Definitely excited to see it and fitting Have for the closing of this looks. series. Oh, Mike, I can't believe it. I, I, I don't, I'm not mad about it. Not mad about it at all. Sadak, not going to spot Meteor there. So Timing's perfect for Meteor, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to find value from it, though. Trying to bait it in almost. See Lucky are trying to set something in motion, but yeah, it, it sadly goes to nothing, which is always a little bit of a disappointment. Oh, the swing! That flash to the swing was fantastic. Lucky is incredible to at least trade that back into touch, but at this point, Genji have already got side control, right? So Plant's going to come down. Bit of a strange exchange in middle, but also look at Lucky's positioning. They're wrapping all the way around. I think did note that QCK was chasing him, but now in a position. His timings. Yeah, to cause an issue back towards short. It's okay, trying to deal with... Good paranoia. The door on the way back through, yeah. Slowing things down, but you noted it before. Look at Lackey and Al. It's got to get there in time because Munchkin's full and maybe very late, but I guess the plant is for it, right? Look at the plant position. That's perfectly placed for it. Karen's done really well here. Texture trying to keep their attention. QCK wins the fight. Now we've got to look at that plant position. Does it come into play? Oh. Lucky's gone down. QCK over delivering, over doing it. And Karen's getting in at the Clutch King himself. Going to pull this one off. And Gen G with the first. Beautiful conversion from Gen G. Uh, I just think the whole time there, Lackey is the one to really throw a spanner in the works, but dealt with very quickly. Beautiful aggression from Loud to come out here. It's actually QCK's flash to open things up initially. He finds three on the round here, but forced into a very tricky position. Try and stick through this first half to fuse. Genji pissed around on the board. Only a ghost in the hands of Tui's. See what resistance there is here. Only noting one as Sadak to drift away from main. No preemptive rotation comes through from Loud. Definitely the firepower suiting Genji, though, as we've said. No real threats yet. See Loud are poised very nearby though. Just at that jumper point. Oh, the timing. How has Sadak lived through that? That feels like texture was good for it. Paranoia. That's one HP. Oh, yeah. The Paranoia are actually catching so many. Sadak and Les though, finding value from the door. And now texture feeling a little bit pinched here. And the shots aren't clean. Loud um, turning this one back on his head. Where, uh, uh, they're both and Munchkin locked out in main. Yeah, they're both at the same spot. This is rough. The HP is really low though. And Gen G just need to try and weather this one out. Les doesn't have the HP to play with, but he does get himself a nice little upgrade here. So, could do well. He knows it's coming though. He's read that. Oh, <laughs> you couldn't read that one though. A really nice attempt and made it very costly. Touch and go for a moment there. Yeah. I think with uh, two E's falling when he did it, I don't know if there was a smoke coming up or any possibility to cut sight lines here. Obviously, noting the fragment and the nano swarm still available for Munchkin and Meteor. So, yeah, loud. Definitely making things work. Uh, like I said, Sadak swinging back through one HP yeah. and finding a kill. Some damage done. Obviously, Genji. Be suffering from that. Just two guarded. Well, actually, now Meteor rifle in hand as well. The sheriffs to round out the purchase. 
doesn't feel as a threatening of a bonus, but I want to see what they can do with it, really. Rifle with Meteor is the interesting part to me, and a pace change very quick to this. Sadak uh, is going to get the drop on them, sure, but does get a keep away with his life. Two, he's going to try and post the paranoia. Uh, Texture's ahead of it, though, and Sadak's going to check him. Just straight body check him on the corner. Texture's going to go down. I still underhand. Flash again, still stalling out here. Costing them a great deal. Sadak is being a nuisance. Caught. But he actually gets caught. Tries Meteor's to flash util. out. I yeah. thought he was good for it then. And maybe with the door would last another second or two. Oh. Cowan Zine is a better Alakia. Now brings it to a 2v4. And Sadak, the only one that NG able to really pin down. Timing. Yeah. Bloody hell. Brilliant from Les. You'll take it every day of the week. You're smiling with that. And Caron saved him in the pistol. I think this might be a little too far. Although Kaunzine really wants to give up his life. Does he expect less? No, he doesn't. Less catching crosses twice now. And happy with it. Loud going to make it through that first hurdle. It was the bonus for Gen G, though. So, how do you keep three rifles? They'll be okay with that. This is the big test, though. Yeah, great work from Sadak and Tui's in the last round as well to isolate, uh, really create some space between texture and the rest of uh, Gen G's numbers. I said, Meteor, not actually land the Molly to try and force Sadak out there and is punished. If that's a, a focal point for Gen G, because every single round here, Loud running with a different setup. Let's see, we know how they like to play around the breach, create as many possibilities as possible. But a big crunch outside here, Meteor can't pin anything down. That's actually horrific for him. He's going to be gutted with that lucky. Oh, QCK right nearby, and they are just getting mauled to death here, Loud in their face, aggressive, pushing them in spawn. Loud, unrelenting now. Karen again, in a similar position to before, this time in a worse scenario, however. Sadak is low on HP, and they're drifting back. They're falling away. Try and run the clock down now. Still 60 seconds for Karen to work with, so plenty of time to make something happen. We've seen the clutchability of this player in this series so far. This is a tall order here. Less Sadak and Karen Zine to overcome. Of his ultimate available, but obviously question marks as to exactly how loud have retreated. <laughs> the whole map feels, yeah. feels like a threat. I mean, you see, he's clearing every single angle here, and those Stop 60 it. seconds now turn into 30. Where does he go with this? There's no, there's no smart guess because there's no way you can put together where they are, right? There's, there's no way you can just gamble an informed choice. It just doesn't work. So you're going to try and bait it out with the smoke. Uh, nobody's going to see that smoke though. So not really going to have the impact he wants. 15 seconds now, and he's walking towards the site with two players. And they're both tucked in hell as well. Yeah, and he's leaving it so late. There's almost no time for adjustment. There's the smoke, and they're going to close the gap here. Yep, he knows it. He's a sitting duck. He takes down 130 HP now. He's unthreatened. Spike is in. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I thought... I thought he was way off that. I thought he was way oh. off that plant. Oh, well, regardless. Okay, all good. <laughs> all good. Seals the deal here. We'll give an orb across to Sadak. The Karen man. Whoa, you those saw last the window, five seconds look like ten <laughs> somehow. God. How did he get away with that? that even the fact that he just stood there. Bullets flying past tracers just real close by. Give him the old nose job at that point. Just barely making it out. Wild. But again, this whole round, Mike, they're literally pushing him in spawn. Yeah. Beautiful setup here from now to open things up. <laughs> Sadak catching his breath after that. We'll see how much loud of have cooked. I, again, because a lot of these set pieces they have, we'll hold that thought for a minute. It's pacey. You can see the exchange of the knives, both going to note each other's positions and progression towards a texture, disrespecting texture. the utility. Doesn't care, goes straight through Stinger in hand, still wants more, not going to get more. Meteor follows up towards QCK, but there's still Tui's, and Tui's is holding on, and he's holding on damn well. No oh. access allowed, <laughs> Tui's, that's his sight. Genji have previously run away with a few rounds like that in this series, but well handled, well maintained here by Loud. And a massive gap in mid that's exploited by Texture. He's up short so quickly. Yep. All the way into three. Unfortunately, nobody from Genji able to really make 
too much progress on the other side. I think Sadak slowing things down with the fragment. Able to keep things in check. So maybe a little bit of aggression outside A here. I've seen Cowan Zine set up. Oh, yeah. Flash of the TP comes through. Commitment behind this. Uh, Garon's above you. Both! And he gets both! He waited so long yeah. for that as well. Real patient play from him there. Can't even really say it's a little complacent from Loud. Garon kind of waits out both pieces of utility. Munchkin now looking to re-aggress with him. There's still two members of Loud on the other side of this. And you're surely thinking, no one's going to be sat here, right? Like, you're, you're doing your diligent work here from Mun Munchkin. You know, he's, he's, he's checking, but Gen G, I mean, the aggression has been there, and they get rewarded for that heads-up work, that diligence in play, and even might catch that mid -look. This is lovely. Gen G reading loud like a book, prepared perfectly. Delivered scoreline looking much, much more even. Absolutely, but a full house for Gen G in terms of the ultimates. There's plenty of options for them now. The other side of things, less obviously one away, Karen Zin three off, but Karen able to turn the tides on this early round aggression. Tie things up. So with this lineup coming through. NG might look for a pacey set piece. Well, Sadak can do the same thing again. It's been too easy for Sadak to slow slow down some of this aggression previously. Once his fury invested as well. Oh, but Munchkin ahead of it, catching Sadak on the back pedal. And I'm looking for the lockdown. It's there as well. That's looking like the site is very comfortably there. But I'm looking at the spike though. And well, Karen's TP not to be. Yeah. yeah, this is just a a fake around the lockdown. I reckon Tui's can do anything about this. Tui's I mean, ahead. Oh, yeah, it's oh, cancelled. I thought he might commit. I was almost hoping he does, but decides to back away. Won't have much info from that then. But his positioning's good to catch Meteor potentially. No, it's really a small tough. Angle. Uh, now, less with the spray pulled away from the dash, but gonna have to fall off from this respect the cross. Spike made it to sight. Yeah, really strange round here. Yeah. Oh, and another one. invested, but. Yeah, QCK now looking to try and find some information. The stun on the back of that info and punished by Les. Okay. The value found here, but Munchkin responds. And then you got to look at the late positioning coming up from Meteor as well. Good positioning on this. The weird spot that's going to be coming in from Munchkin. This is all, oh my word, two E's. Backhands him on the way towards the site. Now you look at the backside. This is Caron, the guy who's super clutch, the guy who gets some great work done, and they're doing it right now. Munchkin falls, so now they know where that last player is. Two E's. Can you close the gap? Can he find them? He can, but it doesn't matter. Caron is so sharp with it. Yeah, that round was bizarre, Mike, but it works out. It's a, a very well-invested fake. Obviously, with Caron, the one to TP across early, does confirm, obviously, Loud's reposition, but... Uh, I mean, again, something goes wrong in the mid-round here. Tui's commits to that TP for some reason. Somebody catches off, uh, you know, catches the rotation, Last sorry, through Link. It feels very, very uneasy. Oh. Looks snappy from the other POV. It looked even worse from, from Karen's. He's stepping up. He's warming up. We've seen a lot of, you know, texture moments here and there. We've seen a lot of the other players as well having their time. But Karen, this map, certainly leading the fray. And uh, we're looking at what they've got. Pistols, stingers, guardians at most uh, for the loud side. So a little rough around the edges and hoping to maybe find an advantage where there probably isn't one. At the moment, Tui's is currently holding back two players who are looking for the orb there. No chance to really do any damage on it either. I have the spike. Gen G just trying to get a good feel of the setup here from Loud. That's obviously semi committed towards this. A stun off Cowan Zine. Maybe on contact here. Could set things in motion as Gen G are drifting as five. This could be quite nice. Yeah, into this choke point. TP's already sent across as well. So QCK ah. could be here pretty quick. First Lovely. one there. And the stun does slow things down as well, Lauren. Yeah, fantastic. Isolates one. 
That gives them a chance. They pull the rotation. Three players on the side now. It's going to be difficult for Gen G to cleanly take this. They've still got a little bit of kit, though, to play with. Not a massive amount, but Munchkin and Larkia's kit is in play, but they've got to be careful. Approaching the side. Unless they want to fight towards CT. Sadax here, though. This is becoming messy. This isn't right. This is going terribly wrong. And Tui's comes out of the flash just behind Munchkin, though. Going to lose his life. And now where do they go? Do they go back towards A? Do they run it down towards B? They're going to go into the unknown, and it's the right choice. Munchkin holds them back. And now the 1v1, this upgrade to round. So QCK gonna get himself the Phantom. Karen with the plant, this guy has been good. Leading the board for Gen G. It's open as well. So plenty of opportunities for Karen to reposition, play a number of different angles and plenty of question marks for QCK. No kit for QCK either, no additional utility to maybe work with. And the time probably gonna decide this one, Lauren. Feels like it, doesn't it? Unless it's a fumble from Karen, but it feels like that guy is not making mistakes there. And you're right, the time, you can hear it. Clock's starting to tick faster, and QCK has to at least get this to half. He knows it. His options are very limited. I that open plot, he's got it to halfway. That's not bad. Oh, and Karen with a wide swing across, dragging QCK's aim way out of the comfort zone. He's going to get the round. I mean, this guy's worth his weight in gold currently. 11 kills, four deaths and a good couple of rounds that he's been tipping the scales on. I mean, already what he's done so far in this series, but delivering here in map three versus a team like Loud, you can't ask much more of your rookie. Composed in the clutch here once again. And giving it on stage as well. The energy still there for Gen G. Almost riding, wow. riding the wave here, loud. Uh, I don't want to call this a desperation timeout. It's a 5 3 scoreline, but. They do feel behind the curve. If we're talking about, I guess, round pacing, the way the rounds have gone down, I mean, it's 3 to 5, sure, but it's been a correction from Gen G. They brought it back from those three rounds on the trot that loud claimed. They've got a good grip on the game. We're seeing the individuals show up here. I'm not seeing Loud determining pace, it feels like. They're a little bit behind on that, which normally I credit quite highly towards Loud. I think they're a very good team at demanding the pace, either defense or attack, it doesn't really matter. So seeing them a little bit behind the curve here, still want to say a little bit more from that Yoru coming into play, see if I, I like a bit more of it. It's not had masses of time. To no, 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 there's been a couple of small pieces we've seen around, obviously the ultimate, the, the, the fault line coming on the back of that. Obviously, that early aggression with QCK finding his way all the way into tiles and, and pressuring into Genji's spawn, but certainly have it. Again, we're not really expecting too many switch ups. Obviously, the Yoru really addresses a lot of the issues on the attack. Yes. In terms of getting through choke points, addressing the back line, and. Give it an operator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is set for his success, right? He is in the place for this if they do continue on this pathing, but there is that question mark middle. That was a very wide peak from Caron to stand Similar to the, the last round. Yeah, yeah. This time a little earlier in the round than before, but now Meteor with three on the platter, going to spot the first and slip across. He does have support there in the form no of texture. No way they read texture. Surely not, especially by finding Munchkin, right? Like this, if anything, plays him in even further, but he's got to play patience and he's going to pay dividends. He's going to find one and Lucky claims less. So this battle in middle is somewhat going Gen G's way. QCK tries to reclear. Ooh, oh, no. Misses. That's heartbreak. But the second bite of the cherry potentially could be the one. This could be it. Could he find him? Oh, the angle is rotten. A texture just dancing around him. Leaving two, he's just drifting around like there's nowhere to go. <laughs> See, some of the weirdest rounds of Valorant today. Yes. Uh, I is mean, it, are we such, the problem? such I mean... a strange exchange in mid here. Uh, and Lackey are finding that. I can't even remember. That's... I mean, I think it's the kill onto a less, if I'm not mistaken, that really throw things into disarray. And, and like here, yeah. dashing past, and then two, he's. <laughs> Expecting them to commit towards B. Genji really starting to feel themselves. Oh, yeah. And getting a good grasp on on some of the chaos in the mid round here. That's an elusive thing to, to be able to do. It's a very 
small list that people have been able to handle Loud in some of those more chaotic moments as well when they try and you know, get in their faces too because we saw their aggression from Loud in just a couple of rounds prior and they were literally pushing them in spawn so they've weathered that but now we go again we look at this QCK quite aggressive towards B but he's going to fall away from this we can see all the attention is towards A that knife Big is info. very very important problem being there are two lurks elsewhere so Les has to consider the possibility, you can see he is trying to get a feel for things elsewhere. Genji drift away from this, sending two up catwalk. And texture Caron to try and find something. And the rest of the setup as well. Now tucked into the corner. Oh, come on, committed here as well. Okay, texture. A whole lot of targets and very little time, but they are damn good at this. Clearing through well, too. He's still going to draw blood, but it's Gen G sweeping the site perfectly. Lucky on the follow up, and it's QCK tucked away, quietly waiting this out. But there's problems here. He was noted on the knife, so what are you meant to do at this yeah, point? They're going to know he's in hell as yeah, well. Yeah, surrounded and hounded. Look at Lucky. That's cruelty. That's what you get for trying to come ahead of the reload. Oh, my word. Got a little, a little scary there, huh? That's a 12 HP there. Oof. But a 7-3 lead for Genji nonetheless. Loud missing everything but the null command committed in the previous. Genji, a hunter's fury of blade storm and a TP of their own. Really looking to stretch Loud out in this first half of ascent. <laughs> well, I just can't believe it, but. A string of rounds unanswered here. Five. That's huge. You, and again, oh, look at this combination. This could be really nasty. They have seemed to make it out alive. Karen does find twoies in the meantime as well. Oh, it's drifting out they, short here. Look at where the death marker yeah, is. They can't stop succeeding, it feels like, this team. QCK, though. Uh, look at the ping. <laughs> They've actually pinged out exactly where QCK is repositioned to. A couple of pings elsewhere, but... I want to see the awareness yeah, is here yeah. from Genji. See how well you clear this. Oh, that's how well. A pop flash. He does turn it. So QCK so quick on that. Can't do much more though. Finding one is really valuable considering they already noted that position. They were already heads up about it. That is wild. <laughs> Genji. Bloody impressive this side. I think only noting texture there, but maybe a little bit of a red herring. He's noted towards short, especially with the smoke coming through now. Two other members of Loud have committed towards this B site hold. TP will come through, will confirm presence on back site. Cow and Zine, let's do here. Rolling Thunder to work with. Two snake bites as well. 25 seconds. That's big. Time, it's running short. Spike is still in the hands of Caron. He's the one to keep him in the back of your mind. If you see that player, look at his position. More stall going to be invested here. They've got to move further ahead. They can't sit back and wait anymore. The plant going to come down. They can't deny it. It looks like they're going to be held at the back of Bow House. They can't escape here. And now it's a firing squad. But loud on to back. Caron and Meteor in perfect unison. And it's Sadak slowly working forward. Finally gets towards the B site. The one way goes up as well. That's half of the entry points gone, removed. He now knows that Meteor was playing a little bit closer. He tucked by the boxes. But so much to clear and so little time. And you can hear it. That spike ticking. His time dwindling. Running low. Looking like another eight for Gen G here, who are under the gun. The smoke just coming back up. This guy has no hope in it. Gen G playing an exceptional game here against Loud. Uh, we could be in a similar situation to what we saw on Breeze, which is just uh, too few rounds to really make this comp change, you know, have, yeah. uh, get limit tested. Give, give, yeah, yeah. give fair chance. I just don't know if it's enough. Maybe four? Six unanswered for Gen G. Caron now 17 and five, leading the charge. What a game from him. What a map from him. Good series. I think Tex should be up there for series. But this map, he has been exceptional. Get out of my way. Right place for it too here, though. Quite a lot of loud on the other side on eight. Let's see if they fully commit through this. Gen G tempering the pace a little, allowing Texture to probably get a little bit of work done with this operator. The slow things down, maybe anticipating the lesser purchase from loud. 
equating to some form of aggression across the map, but this is smoke comes up, a fragment comes out from Munchkin. And follow up on this paranoia. I was just looking to slow any progress from Gen G. I mean, the thing is, though, Genji is so happy to do late executions. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. even matter. If you're not going to capitalize on it, it feels like, they're still going to be happy to hit on 20 seconds. TP sent out by QCK as well. So ready to rotate. Genji have got themselves set towards it. And it's Karan again. Sadak will fall. The first blood will open up round 12 here. So he has to respect this now. We we'll still have QCK here, but tricky spots to work from. Kaunzi, maybe. Has he got what it takes? Oh, the flash, the little delay on it as well, bouncing off the wall. He couldn't even turn it in time. Last only good for one, and they're succeeding everywhere. Now it's QCK and Tui's split between the map and Sur Hello! Turn around! Texture gets there first, removing QCK, opening up the site for a plant, and Munchkin takes out Tui's. This has been decisive, Mike. Breeze was a different deal, but seeing the scoreline like this... Look at that timeline. Look at it. Look at that. What, what can you say about it? That was a masterclass from Gen G there. Absolutely is, and we do, we do still have the questions, the composition in the second half, if this is what it's designed for by Loud, but, uh, I mean, coming out of that, it's a tall order. The big question now is, is three rounds enough for us to even have a chance to see what that new Yoru's going to look like, what they could do on this. I'm not sure it is. We never know, Pansy and Hypoc, we never know. But the thing is, in terms of that Yoru and this comm, Mimi, uh, what do you think about what we have seen so far? I think we saw a few cool rounds, right, where they had these preset plans and they were working well. But I think where Loud got dipped was later into this game when it came down to fundamentals. This is an example of the good, right, for Loud, where they have this really cool yep. kind of variant of, uh, of almost a shark attack, where you're crunching into B main and punishing Gen G for it. But then as we got later on, we still saw Loud going for some of these ideas, but making little mistakes, not clearing the corner in pizza, not looking up when they're going for that fight in A main. Yep. Genji players are sitting there, they punish. Genji, I also thought, did a really good job of slowing down, waiting for this aggression, knowing that this comp lacks information, because it's only active info as a Kaona. Yep. No Sova drone, no Sova dart, and it lacks information because you have no Sentinel to hold space in the mid round. They just had to bide their time, pick the right moment in the mid round, and they were so successful at doing so. Yeah, but it's still not enough because on the other side, Kakuka, Karam, yep. he's here. Hear me out. The performance that we're seeing coming out from him, we were talking about all the names that are going to be back in the stage Ooh. and the new okay. faces that we're seeing. This is the controller that you want to see. We talked about all the rookies, how Narrate and the rest of Casey had a brilliant date, but Karan is on a track of his own. 413 13 ACS just in this first half. And not only that, we're seeing him on stage going crazy, shouting at their opponents. Even at the beginning of the day, he was like, who's loud? <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear anything. Enough. They're very quiet for being called loud. Yeah, this Gen G team is looking electric. Texture is stepping up as well. They look on course to upset loud 2-0. What a moment it would be for Gen G. Yeah, they're on the precipice of a potential upset here. Pansy and Hypog, let's see if they can bring this home. That's the big question, is it? Can they? Can they actually bring this home? Three rounds were all that Loud could claim. I okay, said so we're, we're in exactly the same boat as we were on Breeze. But now yes. we need to see this composition really do numbers for Loud. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be good. Got, Genji basically have to drop the ball here. Because they were in total control that first half. Yeah. It all starts with the pistol. I mean, got weirdly close on Breeze and keep in mind Jinji didn't even win that second pistol. Oh, he like no. turned the next one or something mad. But if we're going to talk, you know, odds and statistics and, and what you expect to happen, if Loud want a chance, it starts here. This pistol is critical, vital to success. Genji could hammer in that first nail in this game. Munchkin's about to get a whole lot of info on that. Yep, hello, that's half the team there. Where's the fifth? Doesn't matter, let's focus on the first. Less does find Lakia, so that... Fragment doesn't land either. Might be a bit of a problem here, actually, yeah. Kawanzin going to find Munchkin. Oh, Sadak as well. That's gorgeous. Meteor with a lot on his plate. And he ain't going to be able to do much about it. That's clear cut from Loud. Clinical to kick things off here. 
So you need to see the conversion on the second, but finally a response on that round timeline. Could that be... Uh, I was going to say, I don't know how much of Lakia was visible there, but it didn't look like much. Sadak luckily played in some favourable timing there in that mid lurk. Round by round. No investment here from Genji. Haven't seen it since Icebox. Yeah, only a couple of sheriffs. I think it's Shorty there for Karen, but that's about it. So it needs to be quite the mistake to go astray. And, and Les isn't particularly, you know, <laughs> looking like he's trailing in this. He's still got that kind of confidence. He's willing to really brawl out QCK on the other side. One enemy doing rather nicely. And yeah, this is loud looking almost automated yeah. the way they're working through this. Jinji not really having much of a looking yet on this map at least. Yeah, done. Cool. Get it out of the way. Flawless second here in the second half. Loud. Now with an opportunity. Yeah, you'd almost hope, obviously, the conversion is going to come through from this round three as well. Makes things as comfortable as possible to start this second half. Actually, even getting things together here, two ro well, two vandals, mm -hmm. two bulldogs to work with. Not stacked up ahead of the spawn barrier dropping. Genji may be toying with the idea of getting aggressive outside B here. Well, it looks like it, doesn't it? And the flash as well, less. But less will fight. Less will always fight. Two, he's taking a look towards middle as well. We have seen a lot of attention to market going out from Genji too. But there's a lot of pressure points. Meteor's the first one to draw blood, dropping Kowenzine, and he gets a follow-up on QCK as well. He is dominated short now. That's a problem, because that unlocks all of that stress, and it allows Meteor to roam. He might even get a bit more. He's seen so much here. Paranoia, yes, is going to at least slow him Whoa. down, but he ran in like a book. Tui's going to be punished on that. That was a round and a half from Meteor, and honestly, loud just falling short. Absolutely. Let's see, with that round loss, Let's see what the purchase looks like, or at least the, the funds look like behind this for Loud now. Couple digits found wow. for Genji Meteor. The stranglehold gifted the third onto Tui's as well. If maybe he thought that Meteor had slipped a little further back onto shore, but with the second player in mid, you can argue, necessary. yeah. But again, that was the bonus now into the bite. But it was a well situated bonus and it wasn't because of the weaponry. So, you know, we, we wait and see. Texture, willing to go walkabout. It's all a bit of a look. In the meantime, we've got that mid control. Oh, the <laughs> timing. That is ridiculous for Meteor. Oh. Makes your stomach drop a little. You can see Sadak wants revenge, but the Aldrone's going to check him. They know the position now. Really solid protocols on display here from Gen G. Meteor might even be played onto the second. That's a stab at it, but. Doesn't overcommit. It feels like middle's off the off the cards. You can't work that anymore. They're two heads up about it. So where do they go now, right? You've still got a little bit of room on A, but they, they don't know about any of this. They don't know about Munchkin's position, who's just about to get his knife back as well. So that's going to be the grand reveal. Unless he actually gets, gets shoulder checked first. Oh, I guess denied. He doesn't get the full picture. Now, Texture. Oh, that's clean from Texture. Two big hits, two headshots. Spike dropped and predicts two. He's just as oh well. Oh, my Come God. On, texture, get another. Show us what you got. This guy is absolutely phenomenal. Map three finds Genji their 11th round. And looking so damn clean in the process. And we talked about it being maybe concerning if Genji have to rely on these individuals, but in rounds like that, it just looks so clean cut. It does. It really does. Oh, they're ecstatic. Absolutely elated. 11, when you string together two, it really turns it. You know the loud money now is going to feel that pinch. It's not going to be in a good position. And they pump the brakes. Loud know it. This game was, you know, recoverable on the half. They did what they had to do. They got that pistol, but the second those rifles came out, Genji re-emerging.
I mean, really, if you look at bringing this composition out, the fact that QCK is the first to fall in the previous, it takes away some of those options that you know, Loud maybe did have cooked up. Now they come into the next round five of the second half with no ultimates to really fall back on. I mean, yeah, QCK won away, but uh, he's going to have a stinger maybe yeah. to make something happen with. But uh, I noticed it in the previous, the, the, the defensive protocols here from Gen G really well drilled. Nobody over committing. Players delivering in, in positions they need to. And Meteor, the prior example, texture here, another. Uh, really, really caught off guard. I said the, the map veto, the first curveball of the day, some of the compositions along the way, but Genji have thoroughly impressed me. Yes. Loud, unfortunately, falling a little short in my eyes. And, and not but it's, it's not of often we say that. No, exactly. And it's not just solely, you know, oh, we didn't like this comp, we didn't like this. It was genuinely, I think Genji outplayed them here. Quite hard as well. But as it stands, we come back in with a shoddy buy for Loud. Stinger, Stinger, Sheriff, and that's about it. Man, the other they, side. they pretty much have to make something work in this round. Yes. The one bonus, they do get the ult for QCK online. That was the initial purpose of that play towards A, so that is in pocket. Maybe the Yoru ult makes some difference, maybe not, because Karen's already found less. Yeah, less. Maybe gives away a little bit of the uh, the game oh. plan here. The Owl drone definitely will. Hello. Hmm. Yeah. Loud's coming to my site, guys. He does have an Odin. Opportunity to potentially slow things down here, but not noted just yet by QCK. Now he will be. The stun comes through, confirming that. But Meteor. Meteor with three! Oh my god, in between a rock and a hard place, Meteor puts himself there. He willingly walks into it. Oh, that's just outstanding from Meteor. Gen G make it to 12, and all of those problems, all those little threats that could happen get pushed aside. And now it's do or die. Loud have a purchase here. They don't have an instant ult to play with. You got two away for Sadak, two away from two. That's not what you really want at home. And anyway, they have nothing to depend on. And on the other side, you've got knife texture, lockdown for Meteor, full purchase. Loud, if you got anything, this is the round to show it. No wiggle room left here. Texture. Fast mid. Yeah, very aggressive here, forcing Loud. Well, at least less, much deeper into spawn. But the and a ton of information, a ton of map control. Yeah. Garland on the back of that. Lockdown available. And like you said, the Killjoy utility littered across A site. But already, Genji are able to make their way over towards A site. Did Loud commit here? Then they are. Yeah, the lockdown. Gonna, what's the plan for the lockdown then? Still that util. Open plan. Can they get out in time? Oh, no, Meteor catching them on the cross. Big punish there. Anyone going to get caught by this too? None detained, but herded away. And look at Meteor, hot on their heels. Larkio with one, down to count Dean, less than two. He's the defuse. It's going on. They can't stop it. Gen G, crush loud in the final map here. Incredible performance. And a lot of us now very much on board the Gen G train. Wow. Uh, I mean, I'll put my hands up. Uh, we talked about this matchup at length when it was announced, and uh, I wasn't really buying into the Shinji Stonks coming into this, especially drawing a first round versus Loud. I think that's a fair assessment. But I, I said at the top of this series, today will be the day they validate that hype, and I think they've absolutely done that, Lauren. Yeah. Looking no. so good. I mean, Karen and Texture, obviously the, the, the headline is here. Yes. Uh, Karen, by the way, delivers again top of the board on the final map as well. Map three versus a team like Loud delivering. It, it's, a, it's a real joy to see. And actually, I'm very pleasantly surprised. I'm, I'm quite happy to be wrong in this scenario. Absolutely, because a lot of people were. I, and again, if, if you look at it on paper, you can say, oh, but you know, all of us were worried about Loud, you know, the weird comps coming out. They didn't look that great here and there. That wasn't why Genji won this no, game. No, it absolutely wasn't. And that's the best part. You even could argue that Loud draw them into a trap on Breeze. They still come out okay, not ideal, but they weather the storm on Icebox. They best them there, which is wild to me. And then absolutely smash them on Ascent. This team is uh, very, very dangerous, I think, for anyone going forward who's going to face them. Certainly someone to look out for. Absolutely. And, and, and 
coming back to another point we made throughout this cast as well. Probably one of the most preppable teams in terms of the amount of tape here. The entire yes. map pool has yes. been shown throughout kickoff as well. And a couple of bumps along the way. Like I said, some of those series that Gen Z had to play regionally weren't a walk in the park. Oh. And yeah, and they didn't look good, to be honest. There, there were some real struggles throughout those. But coming here now, delivering this performance on the international stage, that's what we're looking for. That was the main question coming into today. Yeah, and I think it, for us, it has answered a lot of those kind of earlier yeah, worries sure. that we had. And it's just going forward. We, the depth of the map pool worried me because they play a lot of the maps. Where it was like, OK, well, well, how diligent are they on these maps? How well can Genji actually flex this map pool that they, they run with? Yeah. So far, it looks, I mean, you're beating loud, which is a uh, that's a testament in itself. Well. Yeah, again, you talk about coming to the international stage and delivering versus any team. Loud's up there with one of the teams. You want to say, yep, yeah, we beat them. Opening series came out. 2-1, and it looked pretty comfortable in, in, in most parts. I, I, I am genuinely really impressed with this roster. And and again, the win conditions we put out between ourselves was kind of like, okay, is it going to be texture? Is it just going to be like Karen having a pop-off series? But it was everything else. We were talking about protocols and how impressed yes. we were by that. And that's the bit that really stands out to me is that protocol-wise, they looked very good. Yeah, they, they, they really did. Uh, and to have a rookie come up here and deliver those sort of um, yep. clutch performances, those sort of round victories, bear in mind, roll your minds back to the last round of Icebox to really start yes. the upset here. Yes. Obviously, Breeze being the question mark, but uh, yeah, absolutely blown away. And a, a huge positive to see them carry this momentum across and open things like this in Madrid. Yeah, and, and I think for me, when it comes to, you know, looking at the Swiss stage and how this kind of works out, them getting themselves that one win on the belt is massive for them. That's a massive sign of relief. It's huge. Yeah. And, and I, I kind of think I have to draw parallels to who else gets that 1-0 start. How does it look when they go into those next games at the 1-1 marker? Does Loud look head and shoulders above the other opponents? Does that then put Genji even higher up, potentially? It's always that kind of like, okay, it's still group stage, so just trying to figure out where people fit in. But yeah, in my mind, Genji looking wonderful. Yes. Can't wait to see what they do, and I can't wait to hear from them to stick around. Menuda partidaza que acabamos de ver. Estoy aquí con Karen y con Jen. I'm now joined by Karen and Jen, who's going to be translating for us. Karen, what a performance that we're seeing here on stage. At the beginning of the day, you were saying, who's loud? I wasn't here when they were world champions. Is that the same feeling that you felt on stage? 카론 선수 오늘 승리 축하드립니다. 오늘 정말 좋은 모습을 보여주면서 승리를 가져갔는데 네. 어, 오늘 경기 전에 아, 라우드가 누구냐. 내가 그들이 우승했을 때는 내가 없어서 걔네가 우승한 거다라는 얘기를 해줬잖아요. 약간 경기하면서도 그런 느낌이었을까요? 어, 당연하죠. 일단 자신감을 가져야 되는 게 최우선이기 때문에 그런 마음으로 같이 임하고 게임했습니다. Important to be confident uh, when you're facing loud or an, or a team of that caliber. So that was my mindset, just completely 100% confident when I was facing them. Me encanta. Le he preguntado porque al principio del día le preguntábamos eh, por qué dices que, que, que bueno que, que no le tienen tanta estima a loud porque él decía que él ni siquiera jugaba cuando loud se hizo campeón del mundo. Y dice que incluso eh, estando hoy en el stage él ha dado el 100%. Han estado muy seguros de todo lo que han hecho. Y ahora vamos a preguntar un poco por los mapas. Yo tengo curiosidad por saber. Como aparece ese breeze que era permaban de loud. So loud had been permabanning that breeze during the entirety of kickoff, but now they leave it open. You decide to dive right into it, but it doesn't go as planned. What is the thought process be be uh, behind picking that map, and then also what happened on stage? 일단 라우드가 계속해서 킥오프 때는 브리즈를 고정밴으로 가져갔는데 풀어주자마자 젠지가 브리즈를 선택했잖아요. 좀 선택한 이유와 함께 좀 브리즈에서 패배가 있었는데 어떤 피드백이 있었는지 궁금합니다. 음 일단 저희가 저희 하던 대로 못한 것 같아요. 그리고 약간 좀 유리할 때 계속 싸워져가지고 그게 불리한 경우로 가는 경우도 있었고 그런 부분을 이제 줄이면서 이제 게임을 하자 이렇게 피드백이 나왔습니다. 호흡은 이유는 그냥 자신감 있어서요. The reason why we picked Breeze as soon as it was open was because we were super confident in it. And uh, I think what went wrong with Breeze was the fact that, you know, we were taking fights that we didn't really need to. And Breeze just didn't really go the way we planned. And I think it, it was more on us dropping the ball. 
María, que parece ser que lo que pasó en Embris no es culpa de Laos, sino más bien de ellos, que son ellos los que han dejado, o sea, se ha dejado ganar por así. Well, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you very much, Jen. We'll see you in a couple of days. El día todavía no ha terminado, así que vamos a hablar un poco más de lo que ha pasado el día de hoy. Thank you very much for that, Kakuka. Genji, they pull off this huge uh, upset. I'm your host, Yingsu, and I'm back here with Mimi and a special guest on the desk. Hi, Pog, welcome. Uh, jumping couldn't over leave you the hanging. Other side. Couldn't leave you hanging. Yeah. Especially after a series like that, that, that honestly, I feel a little bad from the conversations I was having earlier about yeah. not buying into Genji, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm swayed in one match. Michael, matchup. they won every scrim. Yeah, I know, they won every Pacific. scrim, right? Yeah, that's that's never steered a team wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, you just before. believe scrim bucks yeah, every time. It. It's never, I'm, never I'm let anyone now. distract. I'm all in now. Genji going deep. Yeah, I mean, they looked so good throughout this series. They're just continuing on everything we saw from them from Pacific, the really strong protocols, really great just kind of discipline from the squad. And also, I think that what most people were doubting was if these rookies could come to an international event and yes. keep up the pace. And back my up the tour. God, did they do yeah, it. I mean, can you imagine being a player that's only played 17 officials and you're sitting across, <laughs> you're sitting across Ridiculous. from like Les, uh, Sadag, uh, Cowan, etc., etc., and you are quite even. The most experienced team we have here. You given it. Uh, as you guys can see from this, there's a lot of trash talk. Uh, there's a lot of energy, high energy. And this is what we like to see, Mike. This is what we enjoy at these tournaments. Absolutely. And one, one of the things I was talking to Lauren about was obviously the validation of coming to this event. The fact that we saw this sort of energy. We know Sadak can get up, get a little loud on stage as yeah. well himself. Loud. The fact that these guys like are laughing it. and giving it. Yeah, no. yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Nailed that one. Anyway, uh, the fact that they're able to give back up and match this energy on stage and have the gameplay to back it up for me is a huge testament. Yeah, the guys just look comfortable out there. It, it is clear that it's not facing them at all, being in this new situation, playing against one of the best. And if anything, that confidence is only going to grow after a win like that. Absolutely. Munchkin was given it. How many yeah, times exactly. have you seen that guy give it? I don't think we've ever LN? said that before. No. <laughs> and, and you know what? He deserves to. I feel like after the performance they had today, they have every right. Dude, and I love of Munchkin. The fact that we don't get Angel, it's just it just warms my heart that we get Munchkin. It's just him on Freeze, running it down B main like three yeah, times And then just uh, turns it around <laughs> and is like dropping bombs on Ascent. He is the duality of man, I as mean, a man. Speaking of... Is Urza, Angel of Madrid? Oh, yeah. don't, don't do him like that. Don't Wait, that's such a that's, hard that's nickname. A, that's an accolade. The Angel that's of Madrid. Yeah. Oh, okay. That goes that hard. Spin? That kind of Angel. Okay, yes. I get you, I get you. Uh, but let's take a quick look at some of the uh, multi-kills we saw on Ascent because uh, you had Texture, Meteor and Munchkin can all drop a 4k as you do and it's what they did in pacific they they do it again here and like, that's, I mean, I was really concerned about that as well because Loud's a, a team that you don't really ever get. They the tend to, you know, like trade. Yeah, one trade, does. or you never really get an opportunity to clutch out rounds versus Loud. It's like that their, their strength in numbers. They like death falling. They're happy to throw three or four Karen bodies onto one person. Kills. Yeah, that is <laughs> lunacy for for a rookie player to come out and do that versus any team on an international stage, let alone Loud. Loud, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it's just, it's honestly kind of unbelievable what this team has pulled off. Like, I, I think that people really did have some reason to doubt. I, I think everything people said about the Pacific field not looking as great, DRX falling off a little bit, yeah. Paper X not up to their same standard. Okay, they got an upset. Like, I understand the doubters, but I think this is the match to cast all of that aside immediately in Madrid. It is, and I, I think as well, coming into this, the questions about loud and compositions, and do they commit to it? Do they play with it a little bit? This was the switch up here that ultimately there wasn't enough in it for me to feel really confident about whether or not they do address some of the issues that we saw at kickoff. Yeah, in, in an interview back in America, Sadak said he, does, he doesn't like Sentinels. He doesn't like playing Sentinels. He's against it. It doesn't make the game as mobile. I think but that shows. On a sense, right? <laughs> yeah. Look, I thought you meant comp. the team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be like, damn, Sadak. I, you saw the Why? video this morning. I think yeah. they're, they're chill with each I other. I thought he was just going to, he was, was kind of talking trash no, about but, them. No, but the agent, and I think he has yeah. a very unique reason on the game right now that I don't I don't know I think it can work on some maps but you really got to bring this this ascent comp into question a little bit because it definitely was Genji playing excellently that is the primary reason why this series went this way but still some weird choices being made I think yes. loud has to kind of go back and do some reckoning within themselves to see what's the idea going forward Absolutely yeah if you great. take a quick uh, look at, on your screens here as well we have two games under our belt which means uh Casey and Genji will be playing the next round because they're both uh, one zero up against uh, whichever teams that we're going to see tomorrow because Sentinels will be taking on Heretics and EDG will be facing Paper Rex. So what do you make of those matchups, Mike? 
I'm excited. I mean, I, I'm luckily casting the uh, Sentinels Heretics game oh. tomorrow. That should be an absolute banger. Did you buy the Sentinels bundle? I won't answer that just How yet. How much does Delsus pay you? Uh, not enough. <laughs> Actually, not I'll enough. Say, yeah, I'm, buy I'm the not Heretics bundle, go, everybody. Yeah. Buy the Heretics bundle. There Don't just bundle. slipping money, money <laughs> under your door to have you show yes. the bundle. Benji Fisher, you know what to do. You know what to do. Uh, but before we close everything out, Hypox, since you are a special guest for today, we're going to ask you uh, to ask a question for our special guest for tomorrow. It will be one of the Sentinels or Heretics players. We don't know who. So uh, feel free to instigate. You, you, you look like a deer in the headlights. Oscars, yes. uh, well... Just... Yeah. Okay, what's, what's the best thing you've eaten in Madrid so far? Oh, that's a really nice question. I thought it was what? just going to be, what's the best thing you've eaten? Period. <laughs> just yeah, ever. Just, I mean, that could be the follow-up Yeah, I had this sandwich once. It was, yeah. it was fine. Okay, I'm looking forward to uh, GB having to ask one of them that I showed show them the question. Uh, but thank you very much, <laughs> Mimi, for joining me for today. Thank you very much, uh, Mike, as well. Of course, Kakuka, who was uh, doing the interview. Uh, Lauren and Bren and Show, because if I don't do that, I'm going to get half top and not flamed. naming every oh, single flamed. person. Uh, but make sure you guys join us like again. To, oh, very my good. God, and Mika and Jen. And Sean um, Gers. <laughs> and Sean, but make sure you guys join us again uh, tomorrow for more Valorant action starting with EDG and Paper X, and we'll see you then. Upset surprises, we've seen it all on the regional stage, but can these teams continue their dominance when the stage is so much bigger and the stakes are so much higher? Connection, Martin willing to take the fight to transfer damage the for them. Flash over the top, Martin. How's he doing this? No way. Try and fight in target rich environment. Take your pick, take your time, son. Live with the ace. Force them out into the open. No easy fights, no easy exits. That is Carmen Core sealing it up. Nice and pretty for map number one. Yeah, let's get to it then. Map number two. What can he do? Paranoia glides, TP in face. No way. No way. No way. Shin. That's monstrous. And life is nowhere near. Half on it. Oh. Live. It's coming, Core. One it's all down to 1v1. Wraps it around. 20 seconds left. Spike still not retrieved. Thomas e. He finishes the job on their feet before you know it. It's a 2 0 wrap to the series for Carmen Core in their opening match of Madrid. This is Genji's Masters debut, but they have to take on the former world champions in Loud. We only get one night like this. The pressure on the site was too much before, but it's less now. And his texture with a world of trouble. Texture, he's on it. Tipping the scales now into their hands. Oh my word. Oh. 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 Remove that meteor will fall here. That's going to get another one. No oh, my no God. Way. Can he stop this? Because Karen ain't stopping. He's going. No way! It's be 13 and it is! Genji! Steal away the 13th round! I've got to have map two. Let's get out of here. Ooh. Oh my god! <laughs> and he's still alive. Okay, not for long. Yes. Oh, one Tension! Oh my god! Oh, if Genji can pull this off, it will be a tremendous upset. And Tanaka is just straight body check. Karam's above you, and he gets full. Oh, the angle is rotten. The texture just dancing around. They're on the precipice of a potential upset here. What a moment it would be for Genji. Lock you with one down a county in less than two. He's the defuse. It's going on. They can't stop it. Genji, crush loud in the final map here.